Hi guys, uh, so we're now coming back to take a look at how to start running your uh, or set up your first campaign with WooSend. Um, so first thing you want to do is click on the campaigns on the left menu here. And then you get to take a look at uh, the campaigns that you've already run, um, if you've run any already, which is what's listed down here. Um, but what you want to do is you want to create a new campaign. So for now, I'm just going to basically set up a regular campaign without uh, any AB split campaigns. So you go to create, give your campaign a name. So you go with uh, recent test. Okay, and in the subject line is your subject line, which you can use personalization with. So open me, comma, and then if you use this little hashtag here, you can then pick out the customization you want. So in this case, we want the recipient name. And then we even have emojis that you can use as well. Um, obviously using emojis, you need to be kind of conscious of your data. If this is like a, a new email out to them, uh, probably avoid using emojis to avoid any kind of spam filters from kicking in. Um, but if it's somebody you've got a good rapport with or somebody that's been opening your mails for a while, then I can't see any problem with using emojis at all. Okay. There we go. And then select your sender. Uh, and if you want to reply to address, you can select that as well. And you can send confirmation to your email address, uh, which is up on the account, in order to be able to uh, understand um, confirmation or when your uh, messages are being sent out. Uh, here you also have a tip box for being able to track Google Analytics if you are uh, integrated directly with them. Um, you also have the option to not track links using Moose Send. Uh, most people leave this clicked off uh, simply because this removes the tracking pixel from the campaign, which means any reporting will, will not come through. Um, some people use it when we're talking about sensitive emails, uh, but 99% of the time it's not really a function that's used with us, but it's there should you be dealing with sensitive information or data. Okay, click next. So earlier on we set up a mailing list. Uh, we called it Moose and Test. So I can select this. And once you're happy with the list, uh, I believe it's a segment as well. So we can even pick a segmentation out of there and it will load up the segmentation it has. Um, the segmentation I've got set up is a free account that's been uh, registered in the last 31 days. Uh, for this purpose of this demo, we'll just go for the entire list and then click next. Uh, you can click plain text format or HTML. So we go HTML. So you can see all the features that we have on our email editor. And this is where you get the chance to be able to um, select uh, either the editor, so you can start building a campaign from scratch, or you can import a campaign from somewhere else. So take me to editor. Okay, so this is basically the design view. Um, this is where you can basically start creating emails using containers, and then within those containers, placing specific elements such as text, pictures, um, buttons, uh, so on and so forth. Um, you can also go into code view, and this is uh, code view is completely, completely editable as well. So you can drop specific code snippets, or you can load an entire HTML, which you then put it back into design. You know, go back in design view, you can make any edits in the design as well. Uh, if you want to see it happening uh, side by side, then you can split the view between the code and the design editor as well. So for the purpose of this, we're going to go with design view. Um, I usually leave the helper grid on. The helper grid basically helps me understand what's happening in each of these containers. Um, and what you can do is you can actually start structuring out your email with containers. So first container could be an image, for example. Um, and a good thing is you don't have to stick to a specific container width. So if you've uh, if you started with a full width container, you can probably you can go into a half width container, which will then you can have uh, one image and one text, um, and you can even drop into you know three containers later, which could I don't know probably have some buttons or whatever. So if we go for a button here, 
Um, we'll see, sometimes you get a warning. Um, I don't know, let's see if I can bring up that warning again. Okay, so a war this warning is basically if you're looking for mobile optimization, if you have more than two, um, uh, more than two con uh, containers, um, sorry, two width containers, so if you've got more than like three columns, for example, then you could be experiencing problems with mobile devices simply because it won't all fit on there. You usually stack it one on top of the other. So this is just basically confirming that you understand that. You can put uh, another button here. Okay, you got it as well. So, I mean, that's just a basic structure. I haven't put any content in there yet. I've just basically mapped out um, the, the containers. So in the first container, for example, I chose the imaging. So you can upload an image directly from your, uh, from your computer just by going to upload image, or you can double click in the box. And then you can find pictures in there as well. So let's go with that. It's not usually this slow. I think uh, internet connection at this time of night is looking rather, rather poor. So if I go for probably a smaller image, let's go for. Oh, hang on, it looks like it's, no, it's not fully loaded. There we go. So there's the image that we have in there. It's quite a high resolution image. I didn't really do a good job of picking up this one. It's quite a few megs big. Um, so we can actually remove the image if we're not happy with that image or if we need to resize it later on. We've also got the option to resize it directly in the, um, in the container as well, but it will still keep its pixel length. Um, you can also crop as well. So side of the pictures, move it around, make it smaller, make it bigger, the crop. And probably because of the size of this image, it's going to take a while to crop that as well. So if I just remove this image for now, you can also enter a URL. Uh, so if you've got an FTP or if you've got a cloud storage device, for, uh, a cloud storage um, location for your images, you can you can scrape directly from there or even directly from your website. Um, and you can, that's fully customizable um, for personalization as well for specific images for specific uh, specific um, emails that you're sending out. So you can also add spaces between, which are always good. So you can add spacer there. Um, one of the good things about this is, if I just give you an example, if I double click on this and get a smaller image. Yeah. Oh, this image is probably bigger. Wait for that to load up. The next time I'll choose uh, images with less than a couple of kilobytes big. Okay, let's see if we've got any smaller images. Maybe that one's smaller. Yeah, I think there's time like the uh, internet's moving kind of slow. Okay, so that's uploaded. Let me go on with the move send one. Not a great pixel size, you can resize that for it to. Oh, there we go. So we've gone with the uh, gone with the snow scene there. Well, as I was saying, what you can do is you can actually save these particular images or with these containers. So this is a container here, and then I've only got an image, but obviously I've added more elements, then the container will get bigger. But you can save it uh, rather than saving the entire template. You're saving in the container, so if it's good for headers and footers, for example, so you can just put this down as header zero one, and you can save the container. And what will happen is it will then show up down here. And you can see it's header one, so I can drag this in multiple times, so that you can see I've actually saved it. So I don't have to keep on repeating the uploads or repeating if I've got several elements within my container. I don't have to worry about repeating them at all. Okay, so I can delete that. Okay, so I mean, other elements you can look at as well. I've shown you adding buttons. Um, you can add text. If you added text, for example, and click inside there, you get your styles. Um, you know, you get uh, the size of it or the exact font, what font you want or the exact font size, your orientation, bold, italic. So, all the basic things you expect to see from 
uh, from Binaf Entertext into email. Um, other elements I can move on to, we've seen the buttons. So if I go down to the buttons that I created earlier, they're fully editable as well. So you can have transparent buttons, button color, label color, border color if you want to border. Um, you can decide if uh, the button is fit to text, so it's only as big as the text, or if you want it to f as a full width, which you can do a full width on all of these. Uh, full width and full width. And if you wanted some padding on the on the um, on there as well, you go to the settings icon down here, and then you can start adding some, some padding or some slot spacing in between it as well. So slot spacing is good because it means the buttons are spaced out, um, and it doesn't look like it's one long button with uh, the word button repeated three times on there. Um, so other elements you can look at are showing you the space. You've got social share. Um, you can click on there, and you can change. You know, you can put your URLs in there. Transparent. You can add other buttons in there as well. So if you want your LinkedIn in there, you can put that in. Spacing. You can change between it. Um, another element. You can also do your social follows uh, here, and you can again you can change the spacing. You can even change the kind of style. So you can have uh, peach circles, for example. And you can uh, solid white, which doesn't show up too well on that background. And then go for black half round. There we go. And you can manage the spacing and add other buttons in here as well. And then fill in URLs of those social uh, social follows. So so spacing can be yeah. If I go ten, oh, probably ten. There we go. Um, and other elements, um, you can add individual HTML blocks, so you can put specific HTML scripts, uh, if you want to cut, you know, for complete customization, cut custom and, um, uh, content that you want to put in there. And finally, if I add another element, so that element at the top, we have a countdown timer. And again, the settings on the countdown timer when it's loaded up. I'll wait for that to load, but there we go. So you can do uh, change the background, you can change the theme to playing on boxes. Um, when the countdown expires, you can change the font, the label color. I mean, everything on the left here is fully customizable. Um, and then when you're happy, you can generate the timer. That should change into the boxes that I set up before. Okay, so I'm just going to clear this now because this is obviously not a particularly attractive email campaign to send out. Um, before I do, um, you can actually save save as a draft. So basically that saves the progress you made so far on this campaign. You can save as a template. So actually save a template where you can come back to it in different campaigns at a later date. And you can then find your uh, your templates in the template library. Uh, let's go to the template library now. So there's several that I've done before. So example, uh, you can preview it. First of all, if you want to upload a particular template. So there we go. So you can use that template. And it uploads everything there as well. Okay, and for customization on your emails. If you go to add element, let's go over customized text. So you can say, hi, Mr. Smith, or let's not have Mr. Smith, let's go hi. And if you're looking for personalization, you go to this box here, hit personal, and then you've got a list of all the personalizations that are stored in custom fields and generic ones as well. So. It tells you which one the custom fields because they have custom field next to it. So if we say, uh, if we want to keep it impersonal, um, we can say hi, first name, and leave a comma. Thanks for signing up to Amex on, and then you can put a date in there. So that's another customer field, so company customer field, date registered. 
So yeah, they registered there on the day they signed up. And that's um, that's where you find your personalizations within your text. Um, other things as well, if I go back into structure, you can throw in some of these um, saved containers I've had before. So you can put that in there, for example. So I can use that instead of this one. So I can so I click on that and remove the container or remove the image. So if you want to remove an element, that's where you remove it from here. If you want to remove the entire container, it's on the right on the right hand side here. So if I just remove that image or that element, and then I've got my space, you know, I've got my uh in fact I've got two two spaces there, so I can probably remove one of those spaces as well. There we go. And then you can go into preview mode to see what that looks like. Okay, so obviously you're not going to see the personalization here because it hasn't actually sent the email out to anyone. So only only once the email has been sent, with the personalization come in. Um, and that is basically uh, setting up uh, setting up um, your email campaigns uh, ready to go. Um, you can always send a test to yourself. So if I send a test to David at Moose and send test, press OK. And um, you can also, and then when you're ready, you can just send, you know, proceed to send. So if I go back to edit mode, let's for now save the progress of that. And we can use that, to, even though that's not sent, that can still be used for automations later on. So it's sent, but it hasn't been sent out to anyone. Okay, and there we go. You can see that specific email there. That's what it looks like. And kind of good thing about testing emails is you can open it up in different devices to see how it looks. So if you've got an iPhone or a tablet, you can take a look and see whether you know, the format of that meets meets the requirements that you're looking for. Okay, let's get rid of that. Okay, and that is a, a basic 101 of um, setting up email campaigns and saving uh, containers that can be used again and again and also saving templates as well. Thank you very much.